The regional parliament in Catalonia has formally pardoned hundreds of people executed for witchcraft between the 15th and 18th centuries. Scotland is considering a similar move, while Switzerland and Norway have already given some individual pardons. Tens of thousands of people accused of being witches were put to death across Europe. 80% of them were women. The Catalan president has described the deaths as institutionalised femicide. Well, I want to bring in now Alison Rowlands, who is a professor of European history at the University of Essex in the UK. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, to begin with, it strikes me that talking about witches is almost the wrong thing altogether. We're talking about people who were persecuted, and very often women, for, in some cases, not towing the line. Definitely. The majority of those persecuted were women, 75 to 80%. Um, but it is worth just remembering that 20 to 25 percent were men and that is um, although a minority I think quite a significant uh, minority um, I think what's really hard for us to grasp today is that the reason all of those people were prosecuted is very very sadly because their communities and societies believed that they were witches so it requires I think a kind of a leap of imagination to imagine oneself back to a time when people believed in witchcraft, they really believed that um, other people could do them harm through through magic. Um, and that's really what's at the root uh, of a lot of the uh, persecution. And in some cases, this was, you know, women, for example, of independent means. Um, on the whole, it was um, women who tended to be married or to have been married, tended to be sort of middling age. Um, so it wasn't so much that they had independent financial means. Most of those prosecuted are relatively poor, of relatively low social status. Uh, what they tended to have done was to fall out with or annoy their neighbours somehow. And that could be because of sort of independent character traits, like being verbally assertive or perhaps argumentative or perhaps a bit prone to cursing, for example. So I think it's less about economic independence and more about a kind of a character and behaviour type. And it strikes me that description could, you know, fit a lot of us women today, actually. So looking at events with that historical lens, I mean, do you see parallels with the issues that are facing women today? I think, I think there are. I mean, I think there are some parallels that can be drawn. Um, although, as I said at the beginning, as a historian, I always try to understand the the period and the events to some extent on its own terms because I think otherwise we can misunderstand things but I think there are definite parallels with with what's going on today I think we're seeing um gendered power dynamics which um result in um you know violence towards women injustice towards women um and actually a disempowering of their voices that's what I think is so great about the um, efforts now to pardon but also to sort of celebrate the lives of these women um, I think it would be great if um, audiences today could get to know them as individuals and know more about their life stories rather than just seeing them as victims of an injustice.